with modern tech and video games taking centre stage, sometimes it's good to get back to traditional entertainment. You can't pick the good old board game. And there are still so many available to buy. Uh, Jim Cohen is from WBG. What board game? Jim, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having um, me. This, this morning. When you think of board games, you, you know, people think of Scrabble, Monopoly, Cluedo, that kind of thing. But board games, uh, oh, there's, there's so much more variety in board games now, isn't there? There really is. There's so much choice for people to, to go for now. It's almost a little bit intimidating. So I sort of see it as my role to try and help declutter and find what's right for you. Well, if you're, how do you how do you dig that? What questions do you ask someone to try to work out which board game they're going to enjoy playing? Well, I had someone contact me on my site about five minutes ago asking for a recommendation. <laughs> and normally the questions I go through are, well, how many people do you want to play with? Are you looking for something that's competitive or cooperative? Do you want something where you'll be sitting around a table or chilling and uh, by a couch? Do you want something sort of party game and fun or are you looking for something a little bit more crunchy and generally once people have answered all those questions in my mind I can filter it down to get one or two recommendations but yeah it really depends on what people want because there really is so much choice like you say. There is some massive amount of choice and, and just the, the very fact that you that you have all those different questions that there can that there can be multiplicity of answers to um, you know that's that's the uh, that kind of underlines it doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the last few years, there's been an absolute explosion of board games being released. And I think it's because people are turning back to more traditional ways of entertainment. They're sort of getting a bit bored of screens and just watching stuff all the time. And they want to actually interact. And that's really why board games are so exciting for me. It's just an excuse to sit down with your friends and family and have some quality time. If you had someone around for, for a couple of hours and you didn't give any food and you didn't do anything, you didn't play a game, you just sort of sat there talking, it'd be a bit weird. People want to have a reason to meet up and board games are just the perfect way to do that, either online or face to face. What is it that you love about, about board games and about, and about the playing of board games? What are, what are, you, what are your, your big reasons for doing this? For me, number one is just a social aspect. I like hanging out with my friends and family. And like I say, board games are the excuse for that. But for me, I, I really got into them when I, I lost the ability to play competitive sport. And this was my replacement for that. It was a chance for me to exercise my mind muscles rather than my physical muscles in a competitive environment. But interestingly, as the years have gone by, I've moved much further away from competitive games and I'm more into cooperative games now where I can play with other people against the board and there's never that sense of losing because you're all in it together. Give us, tell us a bit more about, about these cooperative games because people who've, you know, who, who've played the, 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 the old-fashioned games, if you like, like I mentioned earlier on, will, will, will be used to the idea of sitting around a board trying to beat everybody else. But that's not how all, all games work anymore. Absolutely. I mean, and they're still great. There's a lots, lots of brilliant games like that that I love that have come out all the time. But yeah, if you kind of cast your minds back to those experiences we've all had playing Monopoly, generally the winner kind of enjoys themselves. Everyone else sits there and thinks, why did I waste the last three hours of my life? <laughs> But uh, yes. <laughs> co cooperative games have taken that away. So it kind of exploded with a game called Pandemic, which came out, oh goodness, about 10 years ago, I think now, where a bit of an awkward name nowadays, but ultimately it was a bunch of players against the board. There's this pandemic exploding around the world and your job is, as a group is to come together and figure out a way to contain it and stop it and then find a cure, which is, yeah, is quite an interesting game for the current climate. But the original one that did this was uh, a Lord of the Rings game in fact um that came out about 20 years ago this year and it's very much a quite powerful recreation of, of the books or the movies if, if you're into that and it was one of the first big games that had the players working together to achieve a common goal against the board much like the hobbits are doing in in the story and i think it changed people's perceptions of what board games were about it was a group challenge to try and win as a team which is what we often do in many other walks of life but board games will always beat your friends beat your family and not everyone wants that um, and these are these are games that you can play with your family or are there some that are um for whatever reason the of the level of gameplay or whatever or, the, or even the content are there some that are you know for um teenagers or adults and above yeah, that definitely, because of content mainly, like you say. But I think a lot of the times people are turned off by age recommendations on boxes because if, if there's a content thing in there, then absolutely you need to be mindful of that. But most of the time, the, the warnings on the boxes are about legal things in terms of 
how much has that company been willing to pay to have their game classified suitable for an under eight, which costs a lot more than if you were to say under 10, for example. So it's really more a legal thing. In terms of whether it's suitable for them, I, I've got a seven and five year old and I play many games that are allegedly only suitable for 12, 13, 14 year olds with them and they're great at it. So it's just about get it, giving your children the experience and the confidence to try out new things. In board games, you're never doing anything that complicated. I think people are intimidated by these big rule books, but that's why idiots like me are out there giving five minute explanations on YouTube so you don't have to read that stuff. And what are the big games this year? Or, or does it not work like that? I mean, every year there's the toy manufacturers talk about what the big toys are going to be for, uh, for Christmas. Mm. Are there the similar patterns in, in games? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I think the only difference in games is what's the big game today? There's new games coming out <laughs> so regularly, it's hard to keep up. So there's a, a, a big award given once a year called the Spiel de Jahres, which is essentially a group of very smart German people who come together and vote on the best family game and that was given to a game called pictures which is brilliant that came out earlier in the year but the world has moved on in board game community and we don't talk about that anymore um because it's a few <laughs> months old but it's brilliant it's such a fun game i absolutely love it but uh yeah there, there's there's flavors of the, the minute rather than flavors of the the month in board games that's incredible, and, and, and um, uh, the the idea that something physical, if 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 you like, can have such a fast turnaround time, or that mm. that, that things can change so quickly when when you got a, you're dealing with a physical product, not something that's that's software. That's amazing. Definitely, I think it's because of the cost. Most games that I play cost between fifteen and thirty pounds. There's the odd game that's maybe fifty or sixty, but most of the time it's quite an accessible item to purchase where you you can for most you know household incomes afford to maybe get one a month and what i see is that is a replacement for going out to the pub or going to a, a restaurant all the things that we can't do right now i will invest that money in these things instead instead of a 20 pound pizza i'll get a 20 pound game and then that pizza box that i'll chuck away after 10 minutes of indulgence and probably rubbing my belly and feeling a bit bad for the next few hours that game i'll get hours of enjoyment for the next few months Exactly, and and if you, if then you uh, you if you compare it to you know what people are paying a month for uh, for some TV subscriptions that kind of thing, mm. and it's it starts to look even better value. Absolutely, yeah, and and the the difference for me is instead of sitting there eating food or sitting there staring at a screen, which I do. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to get preachy about it, <laughs> but. I, I'm sitting there looking at my wife in the eye. I'm sitting there engaging with my children. I'm sitting there talking to my family, sharing laughs, sharing moments. It's things that we all did in the 80s, but I think we're all potentially turned off by it because all of our parents just bought terrible games in the 80s because that's all that places like Smith's stopped. You know, for some reason, Hasbro and Ravensburger had the monopoly back in the 80s and they only put their bad games in the main department stores. Whereas now, obviously, with the explosion of the internet, you can share information and knowledge so much wider. No one plays those games anymore, but there's still that percentage of people who only have experienced those bad games. So yeah, I, I just kind of want to get out there and let people know what, what amazing choice there is nowadays and how much better the modern board game world is compared to what we perhaps were all brought up with in the 80s. <laughs> if you think back to the 80s, is there, is there one in particular that's, uh, that might be more responsible, one game in particular that might be more responsible than, than any other for people thinking badly about board games? <laughs> I think so. Is, I think, is there a real stinker? Definitely. I think it's Monopoly Risk and the Game of Life. Did you ever play the Game of Life? No, but I knew people that did. Yeah, that, no. that was a bad one. I mean, Monopoly's bad because most people had it and it's it's just not fun. It's very aggressive. It's It causes arguments. Yes. That game only works if people are willing to negotiate and trade and no one ever is. So the game just that doesn't course. work. Whereas something like the Game of Life, that I think was quite interesting to people. The board was quite colourful. You were moving around. The idea of sort of having a civilization thing where you're evolving as a character. You're moving through life, getting older, getting married, getting a job. That was the idea of the Game of Life. But inherently it was a bad game that was long and boring and there was only really a few moments of joy in it and if you didn't win you felt like like i said earlier you wasted the last few hours of your life so that for me is a, a big sore point that's turned me away from games for a few years but i've got good memories of playing with my family don't get me wrong it's just we could have been playing so much better stuff <laughs> which is the best game you played this year then jim 
this year? That's a massive question, but I think up there for me is a game called Decrypto, which there's a board game app website out there that ranks the thousands of games that exist. And Decrypto is currently ranked the number one party game. I love party games. They're really fun. And Decrypto is just brilliant. Essentially, it's two teams and you can play in any player count. So just get a group of friends and split into two teams. You're done. Then your job is to de de decipher a, a clue, a code to your team that was enough information for them to guess it, but not so much that the opposition team can intercept it. And it's fantastic. It works in a pub when we can do that sort of thing, because um, you can just stand around. You don't need a big board. There's no loads of com complicated com components. And you can explain the game in 30 seconds like I've just done there. So everyone can get involved. Yeah. But it also works brilliantly in a 2v2 when you've got two couples. So I went away um, recently where it was just myself and another couple in a bubble that we were in. And it was just them chilling on the couch versus us chilling on the couch. And the competitive nature between the couples was brilliant. It's so much fun. <laughs> Decrypto, Decrypto. Then, um, is uh, one top recommendation. If you want to find more, uh, take a look at the website, what whatboardgame.com. There's loads of stuff to see and check out there. Um, whatboardgame.com. Uh, Jim uh, Cohen from What Board Game. Thank you very much for being with us on BBC Radio Shropshire this morning. Cheers, Jim. Thanks a lot. Thank you.